Thank you for your kind invitation today. It's an honor for me to be with you. Uh, I came from Jerusalem. Uh, my name is Mohammed Hashim Goshi, and today I'm going to take you to a tour to Palestine and Jerusalem, a virtual tour, as well as I will speak a little bit about my upcoming project, Our Palestine. Okay, we will start at the beginning with this promo. Thank you again. Uh, my journey to Jerusalem and Palestine and our Palestine. This is the title of my presentation today. Uh, the presentation will be divided into two parts. The first part is my journey and the second part is my, up my upcoming project. This is my picture in, at, on the stairs of the terrace of the Dome of the Rock. And I will start now. My name, good, good afternoon or, good, or, or good, good evening. My name is Mohammed Hashim Roche. Uh, I, I was, was going to introduce you. I'm very sorry. Okay, please. But I was busy I was anyway. welcoming people. Okay, please. If it's okay. Yeah, please. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, everyone. Thank you all for coming. Um, as as uh, Dr. Mohammed sets up and finishes, I would like to say a few words. It's really a pleasure to welcome you here. My name is Bishara. I am the founder and the director of the museum. A uh, little bit about myself. I grew up in uh, Bethlehem in Palestine and I was born in Jerusalem. And I was also, I always share this story. I grew up also a part of my, my childhood on a farm that's, uh, you know, been, it's, that's, it's outside of Bethlehem. It's, you know, been with my family since 1916. So over a hundred years ago and uh, currently surrounded by five settlements. So my family has a long history of struggling and, and nonviolent resistance and education uh, to keep the land and to keep rooted. And as you, as you know, that the land to Palestinians is so important. And so, you know, growing up, growing up on that farm, I got rooted into the Palestinian identity and see, seeing my family struggling and my family, uh, you know, I would say beautiful resistance to, to, to what's happening. Uh, it's inspired me to keep sharing the story. And uh, I came to Washington, D.C. Uh, 2011, uh, over 12 years ago. And, uh, you know, I think, you know, what things opened up for me, I came, went to see the museums and monuments and memorials. And I was really impressed that with all these, these artwork and artifacts and what was missing is the Palestinian story and the Palestinians, Palestinian story, like, uh, you know, Dr. Mohammed here and other stories that we have on display at the museum. Right. And, um, that's how the idea came about, of course. You know, you know, we, as we know, our story is always uh, minimized to a news item in the news. We go and see, look, Palestinians are victims or Palestinians to be feared, right? Uh, 
And so that's, that's where the idea of the museum came from. And then later on, we started doing traveling exhibition. You know, we didn't have the resources or the space or, or really the artifacts or anything, you know. And it started as, and I see Yara is here. I think you were one of the people who I was talking to, uh, you know, with, with, uh, about the museum, creating the museum. And then I, I met Delinda, who was also uh, helped us with getting that space uh, next door to create the museum. 2019, we were able to open the museum here. Um, we've been here for four or five years now. Uh, we've had thousands of visitors. We've had a lot of programs and events, and this program is one example. Uh, so thank you all for coming. Thank you for your support. I want to also uh, introduce Delinda, the director of the bookstore and the uh, American Educational Trust, she, uh, for to say a few words. Thank you, Delinda, for partnering with us and for, for being a stand for Palestinians to share their stories in Washington, D.C. Thank, thank you. Thank you. I don't want to take much time because yes. we're here to hear you. We've come a long way. Thank you very much. And, and you've come to Jerusalem um, on the Potomac. I want you. To, uh, <laughs> this this street is now part of Palestine. <laughs> There's a anyway. We are very happy to have you here. We published this magazine upstairs. Um, we have been around for 41 years and hope to be around another 41 years. But. Um, Thank you for coming. We're about to expand this uh, room so that we have more room to have a wonderful event like this. Thank you for thank being you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I would like to introduce tonight's speaker, Muh uh, Dr. Muhammad Hashim Goshe, who was born in Kuwait in 1972, um, writing and publishing his first book about the history of Jerusalem in 1987 when he was only 16 years old high students, a high school student. Uh, today, Professor Mohammed Goshe is a, a renowned historian and architect. He is the recipient of num numerous awards and honors, including the King Faisal International Awards in 2020, making him the first Palestinian scholar to be awarded this prize in Islamic heritage. Um, he also authored, uh, he is the, uh, he published the Encyclopedia Palestinica, which is considered one of the last century's most important academic publish, publications on Palestine. The encyclopedia is at the museum. You can see it at any time when you're visiting. Um, just ask us where it is, we will give it to you. And he's also authored eight independent books on Palestine and Jerusalem, including the Aqsa Mosque, Church of the Holy Sepulchre, the Jerusalem Remembered. Um, he has made significant contributions to documentation of Jerusalem and Palestine history, architecture and <coughs> arts. His number, numerous works on Jerusalem have received high praise for beauty and, and depth and knowledge. He just received the ADC Lifetime Achievement Award. Congratulations. Thank you. He is not, not yet done writing and sharing his knowledge. He is now working on a new project called Our Palestine, in which he will hear about tonight. Uh, it's my pleasure to turn the evening to uh, thank you very much, Doctor Shara. Muhammad. Thank you, and thank you, Julia, for <coughs> organizing that event. <laughs> and I imagine you're going to be, uh, she's going to be also moderating some Q and A toward the end. So, mm -hmm. thank you so much. Thank you, Shara. Thank you. thank you very much for your kind invitation. Uh, I came from Jerusalem, and I am here in DC to give some presentations about Palestine and Jerusalem. Uh, today, I am. It's an honor for me to be with you today. I will start my presentation in order to save the battery because we don't have electricity to charge it. <laughs> so I have to be faster than any time else. Anyway, uh, my name is Muhammad Hashim Goshe. This is Muhammad, the child. I was born in Kuwait in 1972, and I was awarded uh, the title of the youngest historian in the world according to the Guinness record, world record. I wrote my first book about Jerusalem when I was 15 years old, and this is my first visit to the Aqsa Mosque in 1975 with my mother, Allah uh, She, she was she, usually she used to take me to to the Aqsa Mosque to Jerusalem to show me the monuments and to speak about the history of our family there. Uh, after his her death, after after she passed away, I I established this water fountain. Uh, in memory of my mother, and her name can be found on the stones of the Aqsa Mosque. Then, 
Uh, when I was 17 years old, I won the Islamic Cities and Capital Organizations Award in the Islamic Architecture and City Planning. And during that time, I was a student in the high school. And this is my manuscript, the first book I wrote, The Mighty Jerusalem Through History, Al-Quds al-Shamikh Abra al-Tariq. This is, the t- this is the cover of the book, and this is my picture when I wrote the first book. When I was uh, 15 years, 17 years old, I won also the, I, as I told you, this is in Ankara. I shared the prize with uh, Oktay Aslan. He was the dean of the Turkish scholars and historians in, in Turkey. He was 94 years old, and I was 6, 17 years old. <laughs> and in the middle is Lotfi Dogan, the minister of uh, religious affairs. Uh, uh, my dad, he took me to, uh, I was invited to the palace of, or, or the house of the uh, um, Turkish prime minister. And he, you can see my book, second book, The Gates of Jerusalem in his hands. In 2006, I won the prize of the international prize of Abdel Majid Shuman. Uh, a year after uh, Dr. Walid Al Khaldi received this prize. Uh, the Saudi a journal published in London wrote or published uh, 30 years ago in 1993 that the youngest historian or the youngest scholar in Arab countries is participating in an international conference in Morocco. Mm-hmm. And these are some of my pictures. This is with Emil Habibi and Kamil Asli, the historian of Jerusalem. And <coughs> this is my first presentation in Amman in, in 1987. And uh, below is another presentation with uh, well-known scholars from Islamic countries. These are some of my uh, uh, first uh, books about Jerusalem and Palestine, the Saudi Quarter in Jerusalem, the Gates of Jerusalem, and, the, and Jerusalem and the Heritage of Kamil Asali. And this is also one important book that I wrote. It was published in Turkey in, 19, in, in 2009 about the, the Islamic endowments of Jerusalem. It, it was in two volumes. And these documents can be found in this book. In this book, I think I have collected 1,800 unpublished endowment from Jerusalem. And this is the largest number that can be found in an in, in independent book. This is another document which you can imagine how difficult the work on in the endowments of Jerusalem. In 2008, I decided to publish two volumes, one of them about the Aqsa Mosque and the other one about the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. And these are the titles of or the covers of the book. And in 2010, I published the Jerusalem Remembered five volumes. It is a pictorial history of Jerusalem, and it contained 9,000 unpublished pictures and photographs about Jerusalem before in the in, during the Ottoman period. In 2012, this book is titled Qubbat uh, al-Sahra al-Musharrafa, the Dome of the Rock. And this book, the size of the book is half meter size every single page. <laughs> so it contained uh, an architectural survey with an amazing pictures to the Dome of the Rock, a full uh, documentary for the Dome of the Rock, historical documentary, uh, architectural survey, and, uh, and uh, uh, research according to the documents and manuscripts. This is that this is the book while I was in Kuwait before uh, my 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 presentation in 2019 and this is the Aqsa Mosque book it was published in 2014 and it is for the whole compound so the whole compound was also documented in an architectural survey according to this book it, that this book is, is a3 size and it contained uh, 900 pages the book can be found in a, a premium locations in the libraries in all over the world. And this is the location of in one of the libraries in Sharjah. Uh, during my life, I wrote and I published uh, 80 volumes about Palestine and Jerusalem. And these are some of the publications and books that I wrote. These are the recent publications. And this is my picture in, uh, uh, in 2020. The Palestinian on the right side and some of my publications on the right side, on the left side. In 2014, I wrote and I published this book, Treasures of Palestine. It is in Arabic. And uh, the income of the book, I spent the income of the book for establishing an intensive care in the French hospital in Jerusalem. And this is the intensive care. And uh, the intensive care was made under uh, in memory of my mother, as you see in this sign. Another project that I did, I wrote, was 
also about Jerusalem, and I made something different, but in the Maqasid Hospital in Jerusalem. And this is the same, it's the same way. Okay, in 2020, I won, I was awarded the King Faisal International Prize, making me the first Palestinian scholar to be awarded this prestige award. Many awardees who have won the prize have also received the Nobel Prize. And this is my picture with the Prince of Jeddah. Uh, my picture appearing also among the most prominent scientists in the world who received this important award. As you see from this, this is my picture and this, these are the winners the same year. And they bu publish my picture also with Fuad Saskin, Ihsan uh, Abdel Aziz Duri, Robert Hillenbrand, Ihsan Abbas, Binti Shatih from Egypt, and my picture with them. And I'm proud to be with them. It's a great honor for me. Anyway, the Palestinica was published in 2019. It was described as one of the most important academic publications on Jerusalem in the last century. It contained 24 illustrated volumes, and the volumes uh, contained uh, 30,000 pictures, illustrations, maps, and, and inscriptions, as well as documents. These are um, this, these are models from the documents can be found in the Palestinica. This is a, a death document from the 16th century to a, one of the traditional families in Jerusalem. And this is about, uh, it's about the uh, history, political history of Palestine or in Nablus in the 17th century, belonged to Al Jayusi family, a well-known family in Palestine. And these are examples from the uh, 19th century publications. This is the illustration of Jaffa. In the, in the 17th century. And these are pictures for the Palestinian people. And this is the museum of the Palestinian people. These are the Palestinian people in the 19th century. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the most important uh, 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 leader in Palestine, uh, Rawhi al-Khaldi, in the 19th century. Uh, many hundreds and thousands of pictures can be found in the Palestinica, such as the pictures of the Islamic and the Christian sites, the people of Palestine, this is the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, postcards, seals, stamps, uh, the illustrations of the daily life in Palestine, as well as other illustrations from the travelers came to Palestine during the 16th, 17th, 18th and 19th centuries, as well as Al Jaffa, for example, and Al Lid in Palestine. In the midst of the World War War, also the story of the World War War in Palestine can be found, and many, many other stories pictorial history of Palestine. The Palestinica traveled to all over the world. <laughs> and this is a, an illustration uh, that I used in the social media showing that a uh, Palestinian aircraft taking the Palestinica to uh, its destination. In 2019, Pope Francis saw the Palestinica in the Vatican Library and he blessed the Palestinica and I got this amazing picture. And the Palestinica, as I told you, traveled to all over the world. This is from Kuala Lumpur. And this is an article in Washington Report. And these are the last, latest uh, books that I wrote. Uh, the Premium Collection of Jerusalem, The Mosaics of the Dome of the Rock, Jerusalem Tiles, and The Treasures of the Aqsa Mosque. And Good, thank you. So it won't be fast.
Okay, these are the three latest publications I wrote and I published. They were published in last August in 2022. And the first book is The Mosaics of the Dome of the Rock, Jerusalem Tides, and The Treasures of the Aqsa Mosque. The three volumes published in two languages, Arabic and English. And they were described as the most beautiful publications yet published about Jerusalem. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Today, we, I will take you to a virtual journey to Jerusalem. Now, we are on the Mount of Olives, looking to the east side, to, looking to the west. And this is the Dome of the Rock, the Church of the Holy Sepulchre in the middle, and the Aqsa Mosque building. And when you read Jerusalem, you can see the Aqsa Mosque building, the Dome of the Rock, and the, ha and the Haram Sharif, the Noble Sanctuary. The entire area of the Noble Sanctuary is 144,000 square meters. <coughs> and this is another, another picture. The first book is Jerusalem Tiles, Qashani Al-Quds. This is the tiles that I'm talking about. And this book can give us great information about the tiles, the history of the tiles, from where the Ottomans imported the tiles, and many other information. This, when you go to the Dome of the Rock, to the Aqsa Mosque, you have to climb these stairs in order to look, go to the Dome of the Rock. The Dome of the Rock lies at the middle of the Aqsa Mosque, compound and it is the oldest Islamic monument still survive until today and inside the dome there is the Islamic mosaics which we will see later now these are examples from the tiles from the old city of Jerusalem they are all dated to the 16th century and they were imported according to these documents from Istanbul via Jaffa harbor Jaffa harbor or Jaffa port to Jerusalem and they were in, they were in, they were inserted or installed <coughs> They were, the, the Dome of the Rock uh, uh, used to have uh, a mosaic uh, octagons from outside, but the Ottomans, they replaced the mosaics and they installed these tiles in, in the 16th century. So, the, the mosaics dated to the Umayyad period. They were founded by Abdul Malik bin Marwan, the Umayyad Khalif, but the Jerusalem, the, the tiles, the Ottoman tiles founded by Suleiman the Magnificent in the first half of the 16th century. Today we are inside the Aqsa Mosque. While we, I was trying to capture a picture for the Dome of the Rock, I met Eric Matson in 1914, the American photographer. He was also trying to capture this picture. So we captured both of us this picture and this picture from same distance in order to understand what similarities or differences happened to the tiles of the Dome of the Rock. This, this is an image to the drum, upper drum of the Dome of the Rock, and we can read an Islamic and Quranic inscriptions from the Quran al karim here, from Surah Al-Isra and from Surah Yasin. And this is another picture for the drum. Another picture. As well as the octagon, the, 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 the external octagon of the Dome of the Rock. And this is a very close picture to the octagons. This is the... Northern entrance or the northern octagon of the Dome of the Rock and this is the northern entrance to the Dome of the Rock. We can see here the tiles and below is an a marbles. And these two pictures also was found in my book, uh, the Dome of the Rock and in my book, Jerusalem Tiles. This is Eric Matson 100 years ago and this is my picture. So the same distance, but you can see what happened below. We can see the difference between the, the tiles up and the tiles down. So in this 100 year, how many times it was renovate, renovated? What did they change or what did they replace? So we will have another a new idea. These are the windows of the Dome of the Rock, as you see from outside. So I have captured the whole collection of windows and they were ins inserted, they were inserted to the book. And these are another examples to the windows. On the northern octagon of the Dome of the Rock, above, just above the portal, we can read an inscription dated to the 16th century describing the renovation of the Dome of the Rock by the Ottoman Sultan Suleiman, Suleiman the Magnificent. And here we can read the name of the artist who wrote the scripts. And this is another inscription, but on the above the southern entrance to the Dome of the Rock. But this is Quranic inscription. During my survey in the 
Islamic Museum inside the Aqsa Mosque, I found unpublished three inscriptions describing the renovation of the tiles of the Dome of the Rock during the time of Sultan Mahmoud II. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, during the time of Sultan Abdul Hamid al-Awwal, the first. So this inscription, they say in Arabic, قَدْ جَدَّدَ الْمَلِكُ التَّقِي سُلْطَانَنَا عَبْدِ الْحَمِيدِ ذَالْبَابِ وَالْكَاشَانِ مَعْ تَسْقِيفَهَا صَحْنَ الْوَطِيدِ بَأَمِينِ عَبْدٍ صَادِقٍ حَقِّي مُحَمَّدْ مِيرْ سَعِيد سُرُّ الْحَمِيدِ مَأَرَّخٌ تَعْمِيرُهُ بَيْتًا مَدِيد They say that the tiles and the dome of the rock were renovated by Sultan, by order of the Sultan Abdul Hamid the first in the in the beginning, in the first half of the 18th century. These are some panels from the Dome of the Rock, and we can see how beautiful are they. And these are inscriptions from the tiles of the Dome of the Rock, dated to the 1817, the time of Sultan Mahmoud I. And these inscriptions, I found these inscriptions in boxes in the Islamic museums. They were stored, but they are unpublished, and they are describing the renovation of Sultan Mahmoud I also, in, during the time of 1817. And one of the inscriptions here, Muhammad Darwish, he's the grandfather of Darwish family in Jerusalem. And we have uh, a narrow road in the old city of Jerusalem called Aqab Darwish or Tariq Darwish. So he's the grandfather of, that, of this family. Another picture for the Jerusalem tiles. And your, through my book, you can see uh, an amazing and beautiful pictures to the old types and decorations of the, of the tiles of the Dome of the Rock and inside Jerusalem, old, old houses. These are examples, more examples as you see. Another example. During my survey also I made a, a, a documentation for the glazed pottery in Palestine. And these examples dated to the 10th, 11th, and 12th centuries. And they are not only from Jerusalem, they are from Caesarea, from Ramle, from Jaffa, from uh, Tiberias, and other Palestinian towns and cities. And these examples are really unpublished. First time published in my book. And uh, this uh, uh, golden necklace is belonged to a Palestinian lady. She was born in... Uh, uh, Asqalan, uh, it's a coastal town in Palestine to the north of Gaza, and this is dated to the 10th century. Now uh, we will leave the Aqsa Mosque and we will go to the to the convent of the Armenian convent in the old city of Jerusalem. In the Armenian convent, we will see different uh, tiles. It's a beautiful tiles with different stories, but the tiles were made not in Iznik. This time they were made in Kutahya, in Turkey. From the 17th century, we can see these tiles. These are a, be these are a beautiful examples. Uh, it's, it gives us a, 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 a biblical story for the church. And all these tiles can be found in the inside the convent. And these pictures are first time published also. John Carswell, he wrote a great book in, and he published this book in 1973. But the book contained just un black and white low resolution pictures. But in my work, we can see a highest resolution pictures describing the Armenian tiles in Jerusalem. I found this amazing tile in the kitchen of the Armenian monastery. And it dated to the 17th century, and it's only one piece in Jerusalem. Anyway, now we are trying to go to another virtual journey to Jerusalem, but to discover the earliest Islamic mosaics in, through, through my book. This book also was published in the same time, in uh, August uh, 2022, and the size of the book is A3 size. And the, the book describes the Islamic mosaics, which is the most uh, beautiful Islamic mosaics in the Islamic architecture. It is the oldest in the Islamic civilization. And the entire area of the mosaic is 1,800 square meters. This is the partition of the Holy Rock. We are now inside the Dome of the Rock. This is the oldest Islamic monument survived to, to, until today. 
it was founded by Abdul Malik bin Marwan, the Umayyad Khalif, in uh, uh, the beginning of, in, in the middle of the 8th century. And this partition uh, was made by the son of Salah al-Din, King Al-Aziz Uthman, in order to protect the holy rock, which we see here. Uh, this is the holy rock where Prophet Muhammad ascended into heaven from here. And uh, these are the Umayyad mosaics that I will show you right now. The dome of the rock from inside can be seen like this image. It's one of the most beautiful domes in the Islamic architecture. Uh, the decorations here can, can tell us great information about the renovation of the dome of the rock during the, the Ayyubid period, the Mamluk period, and the Ottoman period. And we can see the name of Sultan Salah al-Din, the name of Sultan Muhammad bin Qalwun, and other during the Mamluk period and other Ottoman sultans. If we go, if we climb above the drum in, of the dome of the rock from inside, we can see this image. This is the hole, the holy hole where Prophet Muhammad ascended to heaven. And the and cave is inside, and this is the dome from inside. And again, we met Eric Matson in 2014 while he was trying to capture this picture. And I tried to, um, and I was trying to capture my picture. The main difference here is, you see here? Mm -hmm. And here. So there was this great uh, candle, or what you call it? Chandelier. Okay, and it's just a, a small lamp. Okay, uh, if you go inside the cave, we see this panoramic view, and inside the cave, there is uh, the oldest uh, mihrab or niche in Islam still survive. Uh, it is in this way. It, um, in my picture, in, in, in my presentation in, in uh, the University of uh, Georgetown, I showed them many pictures from the Aqsa Mosque, but today I'm going to take you to a different uh, journey. Uh, now we are, when we go inside the Aqsa Mosque, the Dome of the Rock, we can read the oldest Islamic inscription uh, from Islamic golden mosaics. In this inscription, we can read the, the date of construction of the Dome of the Rock, and this tells us that this dome was constructed by the Abbasid Khalif al Mamun. We know that, that the constructor of the Dome of the Rock is the Umayyad Khalif before the Abbasid Khalif, Abdul Malik bin Marwan. But the worker, he changed and he replaced the name of Abdul Malik and he inserted the name of the Abbasid Khalif, but he forgot to change the date of construction. <laughs> anyway, these are the upper drums of the Dome of the Rock. They are uh, above about 20 meters high. And this is another image for the upper drum. As you see, one of four pictures. More pictures about the upper drum. Now the lower drum. And this is a close-up picture to the lower drum. These, all these details now you see here can be found in the book. Uh, during my survey, I captured at least three, 4,000 pictures. But what I used in the book is just hundreds of pictures. Maybe 900, 800 pictures only. Did okay. You take the picture? Yes, I am the one who took the pictures. Uh, I, I used a, camera, a 5D camera Canon, and it takes me seven years, but not continue. And uh, I started taking the picture in 2010, 11, 12, 13, 14. Then I, I worked on something else. I came back again. I, 2018 and 19. So you will see sometimes you will see pictures uh, to the mosaics before renovation and other times pictures for the mosaics after renovation. And in this case, what I did is I inserted the picture of the mosaic before and after mm. again. Okay. All these, this is from the Umayyad Mosque in, uh, in Damascus. And we can see that there are shared values in the decorations. But the origin uh, of the mosaics are dated, uh, uh, belong to the Jerusalem school, not the Damascus school. The, all these images can be found in the Dome of the Rock, and you can't see all these images because of the problems of lights, and it is high. So in the book, you can see them very clear, but when you go there, there you can see them. It's not clear enough for any visitor. This is the arches, or one octagon of the Dome of the Rock. It's one captured, one, one shot. You see, all this is 20 meters width. And these two uh, arches... Uh, carrying the drum of the Dome of the Rock from inside. And these are more pictures for the mosaics and more pictures and more pictures as well as 
the arches that supporting the columns of the internal octagons on the dome of the rock. Imagine I was sleeping just below the arch. That's why it's narrow from here, from the middle. So all these are all these pictures can be found also in the book. It's the first documentary for the Dome of the Rock. If we need any uh, renovation in the future or anything or any accident happen to the Dome of the Rock, today I think we have a full reference and we have uh, 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 we have elevations, plans, and uh, sections and a, a full survey for the Dome of the Rock, architectural survey. More, more uh, pictures for the arches and other pictures. More. Every single picture was taken similar to the previous one, as you see here. This is the plaster in the in, in the internal dome, and this is the mosaics. And I was discussing, uh, trying to to discuss. Uh, the time of inserting or, or painting or decorating the plaster. I thought at the beginning it's Ottoman. Then I, according to the uh, literature, Arabic literature and the travelers and according to the technique of drawing and the style, I thought, Syria. I think it is uh, Umayyad. It's not Ottoman. Anyway, these are examples for the arches inside also. And this is using here Photoshop to remove the background just to have more details mm -hmm. for the decorations. More examples. This picture is from the upper drum of the Dome of the Rock, just beside the upper windows. And if the, we have uh, 16 different uh, decoration here. These are other examples. And this is an example. And here we remove the, back, the background in order to show the details of the decoration. During my survey also in the Dome of the Rock, I found that uh, the artists, they use the environment uh, of, of Jerusalem and Palestine. And therefore, there are palm trees here. Another palm tree, as you see, and dates. And maybe they are want they want to describe the neighborhoods or the environment of Jerusalem, maybe Jericho. Another pictures for the palm trees, more palm trees, and more pictures for the mosaics. Uh, during also my work in the book, I discovered that there was a shared values between Christianity and Islam. And this is a great example from San Valley in Italy. And from this arch, we can see similar decoration to the decoration, to the Umayyad decorations of the Dome of the Rock. And this is older than the Dome of the Rock. So this is the, the school. This is the original school of mosaics. And this is another example from the Church of the Nativity in Bethlehem. One more example from the Aqsa Mosque building and dated to the Fatimid period. And this is from, from the Umayyad Mosque in Damascus. Now I will take you to the third journey, but uh, through my third book, Treasures of the Aqsa Mosque. We are now standing at the northern side of the Aqsa Mosque. And this is the, the Islamic Museum. It, it lies in on the uh, southwest corner of the Aqsa Mosque. And inside the museum, we can see all these masterpieces, all these treasures. Uh, 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 an oil lamp dated to the uh, Mamluk, Sultan, Mamluk governor of Jerusalem, Tenkez, uh, in 1336. This is dated to the Sultan Jukmuk in the 14th century. And a golden cand candle, uh, uh, candlestick dated to the Ottoman Sultan Abdul Aziz and other burners with this tray dated to the 18th century, and this astrolabe dated to the 18th century also, and it was uh, manufactured in, it was, it was made in Jerusalem. And these seals also belong to the, to the uh, Ansari family in Jerusalem. They used to serve the Aqsa Mosque, and these seals can give us great information about the Islamic monuments 
inside the Aqsa Mosque that visitors used to, to, to visit. Another example from the wooden panels founded in the uh, Umayyad period. It is the oldest in Islam and it was decorated, it was, it was founded in the Aqsa Mosque building. Now today it is, it can be found in the Islamic Museum and in the Rockefeller Museum. And these wooden panels were imported from Lebanon to Jerusalem. A Persian inscription from the 18th century, a Quranic manuscript, one of the oldest Islamic Qurans, and uh, the windows of the Aqsa Mosque, and this is a broken window by Israeli soldiers, and this shows the, important, uh, the importance of my documentation. So they used the pictures to renovate and build again the windows. Swords, and many, many pictures can be found, and many, many things can be found, seen in the book. Now the last destination is the upcoming project, which I'm here for. Our Palestine. Our Palestine is the largest academic work documented to today, written in both English and Arabic. The project features extensive documentation of around 30,000 historical maps of Palestine, contained in 10 historical, geographical, and topographical atlases, A3 size. Uh, the 10 volumes will be published in June 2024, uh, hopefully, inshallah, and will uh, reveal amazing historical details never before documented through the use of various illustrations, maps, and global geographical surveys found in over 1,000 libraries all over the world. Okay. As I said, these are the covers of the project, the 10 volumes, and the size is A3. Every single volume will contain 1,000 page, A3 size, and the whole number of maps are 30,000. Mm -hmm. So you need at least three to four months just to go through them. Mm -hmm. That's why I said it's the largest academic work for Palestine. This is the first uh, volume, Ancient and Medieval Maps. And this is the second volume, Mapa Mundi, the Ancient World Maps. The third volume, the illustrations or the drawings in the medieval period. And this is also another volume about the illustrations from the European manuscripts. Uh, Portalan and Catalan charts. These are the Mediterranean uh, maps. And uh, the maps of the travelers who they came to Jerusalem after Gothenburg's uh, world. They started to come and they started to draw the Jerusalem and Palestine the way you see here, like bird's eyes images. And the antique maps, as well as topographic and geographic maps, and modern maps, and then even the natural history of Palestine according to the uh, earliest books. The mosaic map is one of the most important historical sources documenting Palestine in the early period. This is an example from Madaba. It was found in the church, uh, in the Greek Orthodox Church of Madaba, and the, the, the mosaic was discovered in 1885. So, in the map, in, 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 this is Jerusalem. It dates to the 6th century, and this is Damascus Gate, Bab al Amud, and this is the gate, and this is the Cardo Road. And the Church of the Holy Sepulchre is here. So this map is uh, was made before the constructions of the Dome of the Rock and the Aqsa Mosque building during the Umayyad period. And in the map, we can read a Greek script says Palestine. Because Palestine at the center of the ancient world, Jerusalem at the center of Palestine, and the name Palestine can be found as well as Nablus, Caesarea, Jericho and Asqalan and other towns. And this is another example from Umar Rasas. It's an, also another church dated 8th century, not far away from Madaba and Jordan. And we can see here Jerusalem, Ascalon, Asqalan, Caesarea, Nablus, and Sebastia. The geographer Al Istakhri. He wrote in, he drew, he drew in 1952 his world maps. 
and in his world maps we can see Palestine, Asqalan, Jaffa, Arsuf, Caesarea, Akka, and other towns, Ramle, Jerusalem, Jericho, Nablus, Hebron, Al Khalil. So even not only Palestine, even the towns of Palestine, the names of them can be found 1,000 years ago. Another manuscript for Al Istakhri, also Palestine's towns are found. And even in, if you go to the Bodleian Oxford, uh, the Bodleian Library in Oxford, you see a manuscript written in 1070, and the writer is Muhammad, Hassan bin Muhammad Al Filistini. Al Filistini. 1000 years ago, Al Filistini. So the Palestinian people can be found, found also the name of them in the Arabic manuscripts. And this is another manuscript. Uh, it's, uh, uh, the author is unknown author and the title is Gharaib al Funun wa al Ayyun and this also can be found in Oxford and it is, uh, in dated 1020 and here we read Palestine. Palestine at the middle of the ancient world and this is the ancient world at, and Palestine at the middle. These are, this is the Absala map dated 11, 1100 and this is a Brussels map but these are the names of the libraries or the towns that found in. But this is Jerusalem map and Palestine is surrounded and this is Jerusalem and this is the Church of the Holy Sepulcher and this is the Dome of the Rock. So, and Palestine is found also on the map. And this is another map. Uh, it is a Latin T and O map dated 1100 1, from the Saint Omer Monastery in France. And here also is T and O map, Church of the Holy Sepulcher, uh, Dome of the Rock, Aqsa Mosque, the fortification of Jerusalem and, Jeru and Palestine. Another Arabic map dated 1154 for Al-Idrisi, Nuzhat Al-Mushtaq, Fi Ikhtiraq Al-Afaq. And this is the world map. And if we go deep, we look carefully, we see Palestine. And Asqalan, Ar-Ramle, Gaza, Qisaria, Akka, Haifa, Rafah. All Palestinian towns. 1,000 year old. And in the Cambrai map, the journey of unknown traveler came from to Palestine. He's uh, dated 1140. We see this detailed map for Jerusalem, the fortifications of Jerusalem, the city walls, the, the Aqsa Mosque, Dome of the Rock, Church of the Holy Sepulchre, the Citadel of Jerusalem, and his description in, to his journey to Palestine. This is London's map, but it is Jerusalem and Palestine dated 1200. And this is another journey from London to, Jeru to Palestine by Matthew Paris in, in 1250. He came to Palestine. This is the coast of Palestine. This is the Sea of Palestine. And these are the Palestinian towns. Palestine is written here in the scripts. And this is Jerusalem. And this is from a Bible dated 1262. And we can see Jerusalem in the middle of the ancient world. One more Mapa Mundi map can sh sh show Jerusalem also at the middle of the ancient world. And it is from the 12th century. And here's another, another example from the 12th century. And they draw this citadel or this castle in order to say that this is Palestine and Jerusalem. But it is, as you see, in the middle of the world now. From Giovanni Lerdo, uh, this map dated 1542. And also we can see this is the coast of Palestine and this is Jerusalem and the Palestinian towns here as well as another uh, by Andreas uh, Walsberger, 1448, the same map, or but in different way. And this is the Red Sea, and you see the south is the, on the north, and the north is on the south, mm -hmm. and you see Palestine. Another map dated 1457 by an Italian map maker. This is the Red Sea, and this is Palestine with its names, Arabic names. And another example from 1459. This is the, the Mediterranean, and this is Palestine, and this is Cyprus. Uh, from the 13th century, we found this amazing Portland map. This is the Red Sea, and all Palestinian towns and the name Palestine can be found on the map. And this is the whole map, and Palestine is this area. 
And this is another map by Williams Way in 1458. He drew the Palestinian towns, and this is, I used this uh, through the uh, in design. So I mm -hmm. cut uh, the, the towns in order to describe them and to do captions. But this is one page of his uh, Palestine map, and we can see the Palestinian towns, the rivers, the Dead Sea on top. And this is another example from Locus Prandi's map of Palestine and the world from the 16th century. Jerusalem in the middle. And all these are Palestinian towns. And the name Palestine also can be found on the map. Another print from the 16th century for the same author showing the name Palestina here. It, I'm sorry for the low resolution. It's a PowerPoint as is. Okay, this is Erhard uh, Robich, 1486. He drew uh, the, an illustration for Jerusalem and Palestine, as well as Ramle, Jaffa, and other towns. And this is the journey of uh, Konrad Gorenberg in 1487. He drew, this is Jerusalem, but he drew all Palestinian towns, and he described Palestine in his manuscript. Another Portaland chart gives us great information about uh, the Mediterranean uh, uh, history. Uh, here we can see, uh, this is the River Jordan, uh, Red Dead Sea, Tiberias Lake, Palestine, and the Mounts of Jordan. This is another image you can see here. Jerusalem is as like a castle. And this is also another Portland chart showing the Red Sea and Palestine from the 17th century. One more chart, Portland chart. You see always it is red and Palestine can be found on top. And this is another chart for show describing Palestine and its towns. And this is from an Ottoman atlas dated to the 16th century, also showing Palestinian towns and the name Palestine, as well as a drawing from the 1543 to Jerusalem. Another drawing for Palestine. This is a very clear map. This is the Dead Sea, this is the Jordan River, uh, Tiberias Lake, all these are Palestinian towns, and this is the Sea of Palestine, it's very clear, with the name of Palestine. Another map by uh, Sebastian Monster for 1588, the name of Palestine can be found, Jerusalem also, and the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. This is Palestine again, and here is the Kaaba al Musharrafa with the Palestinian towns, the names of the Palestinian sounds. Uh, during my work, also, I tried to my best to go through every single edition of the published and printed copies of the uh, atlases. So this is an example from Abraham Art Artalos atlas. This is the all editions. And this one of his maps, another map of Palestine and the name Palestine here, Palestina. Another map of Jerusalem by Franz Hogenberg in 1575. And this is Jerusalem and Palestine, and the name Palestine can be found on the map. More details. And this is an ex another example from 17th century to Jerusalem and surrounding area, and Palestine is found. And this is Jerusalem in the middle of the ancient world. This is Asia, Europe, and Africa, and Jerusalem in the middle. From 1581. And this is also to Palestine, but without the name of Palestine, just the Palestinian towns from the 16th century. But here, Palestine, Palestina. And this is the map of Palestine, and this is dated to 1554, 500 years ago. Another map saying Palestina, Palestina, and this is Palestine. And this is dated also to the 16th century. And another map from the 16th century, and here we read Palestina. More maps of Palestine, and now we are in the 18th and 19th century, and here is Palestine on top, and Palestina, or Palestine, again, Palestine, 1880, this is an atlas of Palestine and the name Palestine on top, describing the land of Palestine. Another atlas from 1892, the name Palestine can be found here also. And Palestina again, Palestine on top, modern Palestine, and this is map of Palestine, and this is Palestine. All these are 19th century's map, 
And this is Palestine again on top. And this is a German atlas showing Palestina or Palestine. And this is an Ottoman atlas, Ard Palestine, the land of Palestine, 19th century. And this is also, uh, you can read Palestina. Mm -hmm. Eight, nine, okay, this is an, the Austrian atlas. And this is the map of Palestine. This is dated 1906. And this is 1915, also Palestine. And Palestine again during the World War, First World War, 1918. And this is another German atlas, Palestina. And this is Palestine again, and Palestine, and Palestine, the, the name Palestine never ended. 30,000 maps saying that I am Palestine. Mm -hmm. So I named the book Our Palestine. Even in the book, we can found, we can find uh, an independent volume describing or presenting the illustrations that found in the medieval manuscripts, describing the towns of Palestine, the cities of Palestine, the daily life of Palestine, like these drawings. This is why the, Chris, the Franks trying to attack Jerusalem in 1099. And this is Jerusalem. And this is Gaza. And this is the siege of Jerusalem. And this is a battle between the Ayyubids and the Franks. And these are another illustrations. One, another illustration. And this is the siege of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre and the, uh, the walls of Jerusalem. And this is the uh, Ayyubid Sultan Salah al -Din, And this is the battle of Jerusalem. And this is the building, they are building up again the fortification of Jaffa. And other illustrations from uh, Akka, Jerusalem, Tiberias, and other Palestinian towns, as well as the Battle of Hattin. So 3,000 illustrations can be found also in the work, as you see. And this is Jerusalem and Ramleh, and this one, this ma this drawing was made in, 1400, in 1,400 by an artist called Adam. And even the natural history of Palestine also can be found in my work, such as the birds, according to the publications pre-19th century and according to the mosaics, especially the Byzantine mosaics. And these illustrations from the 18th and 16th publications describing the fish of Palestine, the nature of Palestine, the wildlife in Palestine and the lions, everything <laughs> in the natural history of Palestine, the flowers, everything. And this is Lod, the town, Palestinian town. And at the end, we see the Christopher Columbus map showing Palestine. And the name of Palestine can be found in his map when he discovered the United States or America. At the end, we return back to Washington, D.C. with the uh, uh, British painter uh, David Roberts. Thank you very much. Thank you. And the photos and the stories. The Thank you. Centuries of history. Anybody have any questions? Is this the land without people? <laughs> That's what I heard. <laughs> All of this was invented after 1961, I'm sure. There was no Palestine. 67. Yeah, 67. <laughs> there we go. I have a question. Yes, please. What inspired this lifetime journey? Mm into this in-depth research that took you back centuries. What, what is it that inspired you at the age of 15, 16, to start on this path? That's why I started with the picture of my mother. Mm -hmm. And uh, she, my mother and my father, they used to encourage me uh, to write. And I remember when I was nine or 10 years old, I sent a letter to my, do my sister. She was studying medicine in Cairo in Egypt. I wrote the historian Muhammad. <laughs> but I, but what, but I it was uh, I mean, I wrote it in different way. It's not correct in write in, in Arabic writing, mm -hmm. so I wrote it different. But uh, I signed the historian Muhammad. From where I got historian, I don't know. Maybe if I wrote uh, the author Muhammad, okay. But the historian Muhammad, I don't know. But what I believe is um, my mother, my father, the parents. Uh, uh, they took my hands to the future, 
and they encouraged me to write about Palestine. And uh, my first book, I remember my dad, Allah Yerhamu, he, he, he tried his best to publish the book. And when I published the book, it was a great day for him. And in that, since that date, I became the youngest writer or the youngest historian in the world. And uh, I tried my best to, 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 to be the historian of Jerusalem. And while that was not easy, it was not an easy journey. But uh, I think, uh, hope I, until today, all the previous publications are, yani, they were described the most important, the most beautiful. But I think the upcoming projects, especially our Palestine, is something different. It will be the best thing I did in my life. And I don't think that I'm going to do better than the, our Palestine in my life. That's saying a lot, given all of the, the work that you have done. And, and I hope I can you. I hope I can publish the book when the, by June 2024. And uh, this is my goal. And uh, that's why I'm here in the United States to give lectures and presentations about the, the work. And inshallah, next year I come with my big volume with me. <laughs> <laughs> Question for you. Please. Did you have to travel to different areas to the West <coughs> Museum? Of course. Uh, from 2011 to 2019, I have traveled to around 90 countries. Every year, 10 countries. My wife and my, my daughters and my son, they used to enjoy nature and enjoying shopping. But for me, I used to go to archives, libraries, and at, uh, at, the, at, and at night, I take them to a restaurant. <laughs> But it was not easy. Uh, I don't think there's a, there, there are a main library in Europe, in Africa, in Asia that I did not go to. I did not target. And uh, I was planning, I was, I, I know, I, I, I knew my, 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 my goal. I, I, I knew that I wanted to do something for mapping Palestine. So that's why I, I succeeded to collect all these it was amazing. Documents, yes. Mm -hmm. It's 30,000 maps. What's the cost of this project? My life. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but what does it take to print it? It's going to cost, it gonna cost uh, 4,050 4, 4, US dollars. Mm -hmm. And today I have 225 from them as a sponsor from a friends. And I'm looking forward to complete the, the number, the amount, in order to have the ability to publish the, the work. This work, it's not an individual project. This is a, 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 a country project, and we don't have a country today. Mm -hmm. So I have to work uh, individual, and uh, it's not easy. Uh, I have to be patient, and I have to focus on my work. And this, I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm, I'm not a, sell, I'm not a salesman. Mm -hmm. I'm not a businessman, so it's very difficult for me to get funding. But it's really easy for me to work in the field or to write or to publish or to do something academic work. But trying to be as a salesman and go to Julia till asking her for a fundraise, it's very difficult for me. This is a major problem for me. You know what would be uh, amazing is I, I work for the Palestinian Museum, I'm also a cartographer, is that we could do an exhibition of some of these maps, prints, mm -hmm. that you could curate. And uh, I don't know if you thought about even putting them in a geospatial information system, doing some <laughs> technology, which is kind of my field, which would which would kind of be a, 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 a amazing as a tool to allow people to, to look for patterns, to look at the, the politics, the history, the economics, all of this story is so rich and it's, it's, it's uh, amazing possibilities. And I will be honored to to, uh, to participate in anything in, in, in this regard. Just another question. I've, I've been to many mosques. I'm not, uh, I'm, I'm not Muslim. I know there's geometric patterns. There are uh, botanicals. There are, there's calligraphy. There's never uh, a person or even an animal. Can, can you tell me really why that is? Is there a simple way to ex explain that? No, but if you go to the palace of the Umayyad Khalid Hisham bin Abdul Malik in, in, in Jericho, okay? And this palace was uh, uh, the, the Qasr Hisham. 
if you go to Rockefeller Museum there, and they imported every important uh, uh, statues or, or, or stones or inscriptions from Jericho to Jerusalem, you can see different story. You can see that Muslims from the, in the early Islamic period, they used everything, not only just uh, drawing uh, plants and no, even they drew animals. And, and even there is also uh, a status for the Umayyad Khalif Hisham. It's a big one with his mustache. And so, of course, of course, of course. And the Rockefeller Museum was originally um, Palestinian. Ah, it is the, the Museum of Palestine. If you enter when you when you enter the museum, you can read an inscription on the door. This is the um, this is the Museum of Palestine under the government of Palestine, as gifted by the Ottoman Empire. Yes. I had a question that about the, the mosaics of Khazar Hisham. Were they influenced by the Romans or, I mean, some of the earliest or the Byzantine Empire? That's why I presented the picture of from San Vitali. Yeah. So there were, there were a shared values between Islam and the Christianities. And I think the major uh, or the most, the most important artist in the early Islamic period, they were Romans and Byzantines. Mm -hmm. Because Muslims, they came from Arabia and they don't have enough uh, artists on enough power, they have the money, they have an em a great emperor, but they don't have the experience to work uh, such projects like the Dome of the Rock. But the, the two architects, they are from Palestine, uh, Raja bin Hayw al-Kindi and Yazid bin Salam al-Bisani from Bisan. And when they finished the construction of the Dome of the Rock, they sent to the Khalif, Abdul Malik, telling, them, telling him that we finished and there are some money left from the project, what should we do? We have to send it back to you. He said, no, this, this money is a gift for you. They said, no, we will not take it. And uh, we will pay from our pockets to build up this mosque. And then he used the money to make the golden dome of the dome of the rock. That's a great story. <laughs> yeah, um, have you met people who doubted your Sorry? Of course, many people, they doubt my work and others, they encourage my work and some people they love. So this is uh, yeah. normal. Right. Yeah. But I imagine especially for on the topic of Palestine and Palestinian history and maps, there's probably... I am an academic scholar, okay? I, I'm not a political scholar, okay? So uh, what I think when you give evidence and you give reference, so the other, he has to respect because oh, every single map here has its own reference, and this reference can be found in the in Europe, in America, in Asia. So it's not in our archives. If what? somebody wants to help you uh, realize your dream to publish this, what do they need to do? Somebody today wants to help you. What can they do? Now my goal is to continue. Uh, uh, getting the fund for the project. Now I'm at the middle, and this is very dangerous, according to my friend. A friend of mine, he phoned me one day while I was leaving the GCC, Arabian Gulf. He told me, you are, I told where where are you now? I told him I'm in the middle, so I have the half of the money. And I left the money in the bank there, just not to be weak to take the money, because this, this money is for the printing. Mm -hmm. I told him I'm in the middle. He said, my God, this is very, very dangerous. I told him why. He told me you have you have to go forward, not to go back. So it's you have to go forward. So how you do can't go help back. You? Yeah, how do people help you to do that to go forward? Today, do you have a fund, a to, fund set up or? yes. Today, I'm 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 looking forward to get either funding for the upcoming project mm -hmm. or to purchase from previous applications that I have. Both ways can support me to try to building up the project again. Which leads me to. I'm oh, sorry. No, no, I mean, the same thing, same regard. Uh, what's the books that you have for sale? I mean, and much? where can people find mm -hmm. them? Mm -hmm. yeah. I have many books. I have some coffee tables. <laughs> I have a website, but for the Palestinian, unfortunately. But I'm using the Facebook page, the Instagram. But I think, yes, I should I should work on a website. And maybe many people here in DC, they advised, they advised me to do a website. 
and my son now is working on it. Good. <laughs> <laughs> I have capitable publications about Palestine. Unfortunately, 90% of them are in Arabic. But what I have in English is the premium collection. We have Arabic speakers in the yes. country. Yeah. Yeah. The premium collection are in English that I showed today, the mosaic, the tiles, and the oh, treasures, as well as the Palestinica, and also the upcoming project, it is in English and Arabic. How much Our is Palestine. the premium publication? The premium publication costs uh, $250 each, okay? Palestine. And usually, no, the premium collection. And usually I ship the book uh, DHL door-to-door -door with no charge, free of charge. Mm -hmm. oh, and the Palestinica costs, it's 24 volume, it costs $1,500. And, uh, wants to see it, and it is, it, the weight is 51 kilos and 7,000 pages. Can you buy it one volume at a time? <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, but, so people, people email you and ask you, or is there a location, a website? Or something yes, they can order? email me through the website of the Palestinica or okay. through the, via the, Facebook or Instagram and today here when I came to America they the people advised me to go through the a non-government organization which uh, I found and we have a QR they can just scan this QR mm -hmm. and they see the uh, all options and they can uh, purchase or donate or. Great. So where do we find Dr. that? Dr. can you share where we can find that? Yeah, sure. uh, you, you told your wife to do after you're no longer with us. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, I can't, I can't, ex please. He told his wife to write, I have justified my existence on his tombstone. So for him, it's a project of existence. It's a, a project of justification, of uh, uh, really saying we Palestinians are here and we will continue to be here through this project. I think, in my opinion, it's just huge. Mm -hmm. And a project Thank you. of love, truly. Mm -hmm. Spend all that time in this yes. archive. Yes. What, was the, what was the most difficult archive for you to access? I have, I'm today, most of the archives, they know my name. And uh, even the scholars in all over the world, especially the scholars of who, who are dealing with Jerusalem and Palestine, they contact me, and I am helpful. Yani, I, I, I really assist, yani, yani, the way I can. Uh, so they know my name. I don't think I found. Uh, yani, it was not so difficult. I not didn't even find difficulties. Archives. Even I, they opened for me the, the monastery. Mm -hmm. The convent. It's, these Maybe. pictures are first time published. Mm -hmm. So they respect what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I will tell you a story. When I wrote my book about the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, I am a Muslim from Jerusalem. And to be honest, we don't have any, there is no difference between Muslim and Christian in Jerusalem. We all brothers. We all live, all my neighbors, my, my, yani, we all, we live, we, we married to each other. It's, it's normal in Jerusalem because there is the tolerance of Omar ibn Khattab there. Mm -hmm. So when I wrote this book, I, I invited the head of the, uh, of the churches to my house and I told them the Church of the Holy Sepulchre is a name of tolerance, of love. There is no place for conflict between each of you. And they agreed to write an introduction, all of them, to that book. And they wrote the introduction. That's amazing. <laughs> After all the conflict points they have, the different uh, Christian religions there. Mm -hmm. I did have a question. Uh, this is, so we get, I mean, we, we do get a lot of Jewish visitors to the museum. A lot of them ask about Palestinian Jewish history and ancient Palestinian, medieval Palestinian Jewish history. And I feel like there isn't enough work, there's like a research gap on that. I didn't know if you had managed to touch upon ancient medieval Jewish history in Palestine and Jerusalem. Uh, that's why in the Palestinica you can see many uh, Jewish illustrations and uh, Palestinian Jewish illustrations and drawings and picture photographs and so what I believe as a Palestinian scholar and as a Jerusalemite mm -hmm. that uh, the panoramic view of Jerusalem cannot be completed without the image of the Dome of the Rock 
the dome of the church of the Holy Sepulchre and the synagogue. Mm -hmm. So this is the this is Jerusalem. What we what we love to see, and uh, Jerusalem, the the Palestinian and the and the Jerusalemite is not the man who born in Jerusalem or in Palestine only. He is the man who is making or he is, who is keeping the or, or he's making the Jerusalem and Palestine lived in his heart and in his consciousness. Mm -hmm. So this is the Palestinian. Palestine is uh, the last occupation in, in, in history. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? I want to thank you so much for sharing um, your work, your vision, and the hope of your new project. Thank you very much. And we will do whatever we can to help you to achieve Thank you. that because we are selfishly awaiting it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you.